a local perspective, and um, <coughs> I wanted to talk about one of my patients, who is very local, was very local. She lived in Richmond Street, about half a mile that way, in a, a basement flat, one bedroom basement flat. Uh, she was about 85 when I first knew her. She had mar married unusually a German person after the war, German man, but she'd been a long time a widow. She had two daughters, one living close, one a long way away, who were struggling to look after her. She had lots of medical problems, but her main problem was that she had awful arthritis. And arthritis and basement flats do not go well together. And she was very isolated, and uh, despite my best endeavours from a medical point of view, over the period of time I knew her, and over, despite the help of social services, community services, attendances to A&E, admissions, she eventually deteriorated and actually ended her days in one of the residential homes in Hammersmith and Fulham. So, to, for her, so I'm supposed to say here, the STP, this plan, is an umbrella thing. How would that affect Pat? Well, we find it very hard to coordinate care across lots of different agencies. So social care, community nursing, general practice, uh, the acute trust. <coughs> and so we need a framework that we can help a patient of mine like Pat so that her care is as good as it can be and it meets his needs as much as we can. Well, why don't we do that just in Hammersmith and Fulham? Because we, we both, both the council and the community nurses and our human trust really want to work with each other. But the issue is that some of our agencies span multiple boroughs so that there will be patients coming into uh, imperial facilities from all over five or six boroughs. And in order to have a consistent approach across that sort of geography, we need this thing that is currently called the SDP. It builds on work we've already done. It's there for five years, and it's not finished. It's, it's a, an iterative process. We will keep trying to improve it. <coughs> the national strategy says there are three gaps. What does that mean? The health and well-being gap means that actually not everybody in this borough has equal access to care. Not everybody, if you've got an irregular heartbeat, has the same chance of that being picked up and treated well. So one of the gaps that we're trying to bridge is how do we get that fair deal wherever you live in House Metal The second gap is care and quality. You would think that wherever you ended up in the National Health Service, you would get the same level of care. You don't. There is a huge gap, and sometimes you are lucky and you get truly excellent, world-beating care, and sometimes you don't. That's a gap. We want that not to be there so that you get not only the same chance of being diagnosed, but the same chance of having a good outcome. And then there's a finance and efficiency gap. My mother, who doesn't live in Hammersmith and Fulham, has three care plans next to her front door. They're all written by different agencies coming in to assess her needs. They're all out of date. And public money has gone in three times for those three care plans to be done. That is not a very good way of using public money. We need to work with the resources we have to make them more efficient. We know that the population of Hammersmith and Fulham will have increasing needs over the next five years. I'll be four years there. So, lots of long-term conditions. We are, as a population, we are aging. We have more long-term conditions. We have more people who are being diagnosed with cancer and indeed are surviving with cancer. But it's going to be more of a burden because our population is aging. We have and it's a small part of our population, individuals with learning disabilities, but their needs will grow over the next four years. 
and because we've got an aging population, we will have more people with dementia. All these will put further calls on our public resources. I jumped one. We're not starting from nowhere. We have, in order to address some of these gaps, instead of a situation where each GP practice would offer some services, we have made 18 of our services population-based so that wherever you are registered in Hammersmith and Fulham, you'll get the same deal. Before, you might be lucky and a practice would do something. Now, if the practice doesn't do that themselves, you can access that service close to where you live. We have already improved our seven-day opening for GP practices. It says a certain number of appointments. It means that you can see somebody at the weekend. It may not always be in your own GP practice, but the doctor, with your permission, can see your notes and can treat you as if you were a doctor in that doctor's practice. We have community musculoskeletal services that you can self-refer to. You don't need to see a GP. If you've got something wrong, you can start accessing the services and be assessed and access those services in that way. That is a step forward, as is the cardiorespiratory services, which are doing, I think, one of the major changes that we're seeing within healthcare. There is less difference between primary care and secondary care. There are lots of secondary care consultants working in the community. There are lots of GPs working a lot alongside specialists in community clinics. That is a major change, and I think that is better for the people in our area that need those services. We have 120 community champions. We are working more and more with uh, third sector, with voluntary sectors, with people who actually become experts in signposting residents to places that their needs can be met. Oh, I'm doing, this is jumping a lot. There. So, these are the five main areas. I'm, you, you should be thankful I'm not going through the five. I'm just going to point out two things. Improving health and well-being comes in a great many forms in terms of how you keep people well and prevent people coming from harm that they may not even know about. We, have, we are a national pilot in Hammersmith and Fulham for screening for pre-diabetes. If you screen for pre-diabetes rather than diagnose diabetes, you have a chance <coughs> that that person doesn't even get diabetes. So that, I think, is an important step forward. And then I was just going to talk about better care for older parents, pa patients. Pat. It's not just about the person, it's about the huge, the thousands of carers we have in Hammersmith and Fulham. Our main workforce in Hammersmith and Fulham are the carers, the unpaid carers. So it's not just about supporting the individual patient, it's supporting the people who support the individual patient. It's not just about supporting people in hospital or when they can be at home. It's about working with care homes and residential homes and nursing homes and supportive housing so that where people live, you can get more of your care there. So it's not as institutional, it's a population approach about meeting people's needs. So I've already mentioned some of these. There's lots of organisational boundaries being bridged so that there is less fragmentation, so that people like Pat get better, less fragmented care. That's all I have to say. Can I introduce Tracy Pat?